Hello everyone and welcome to another first level video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to properly draw from a holster, conceal, and get onto target. Now, I will say humbly that there are plenty of ways to do do things. Um, if you get five, I, I firmly believe if you get five instructors in a room, they're going to show you five different ways to do a particular uh, technique or to perform a particular action. I'm going to show you the way that I've been trained and the way that it seems to work best for me, uh, the way that I feel allows you to get onto your sights pretty quickly and get onto target pretty quickly. So first thing we're gonna do is clear the firearm, lock back, no magazine in the grip, and no round in the chamber, okay? So the firearm is safe. I'm gonna reholster it. So as of this recording, uh, it's been pretty warm outside. We're in the mm -hmm. summer months. So this would be uh, kind of an example of how I would dress uh, on a day like today, this, this time of year, um, while I'm concealing. So it's just, uh, just a shirt and a t-shirt underneath. I have an inside the waistband holster uh, for the SIG 229 Legion. So let's just get started. So the way I do it is once I identify a threat, now first of all, let me get this out of the way real quick. No one's gonna react right away when they've identified a threat. There's always gonna be some sort of external stimulus, a loud noise or a sound or uh, just some, something that will alert you and your body is going to react subconsciously with a flinch or a startle, right? Okay, so I try to incorporate that into my training, particularly when I am going to be drawing from the holster. So basically, uh, once I've identified the threat after I've startled or I've flinched or what have you, then I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna clear the firearm. Notice where I have my hand, it's up in this area right up against my chest. This is really for training uh, because we don't want to come up and flag our hand while it's out here necessarily. So we put it right to the chest. We clear the garment. Now I will say this, every now and then, if I don't feel like I have, and maybe I need, maybe I need to train more, I'm not too ashamed to admit that, but sometimes when I'm going for it, I have the instinct to pull up and grab with this left hand. In any case, what you want to do is you want to come down for uh, reach, go for the, go towards the holster, and you want to grab the garment. Again, I'm just wearing the one shirt. Pull up as high as you possibly can. Now you can either whatever you're comfortable doing, go for the firearm. Or if you feel like if this is a light frilly cloth or whatever, and it, it doesn't have much, it flaps too much or whatever, and you need to support it you can use this hand to do so while you go for the firearm, okay? Bottom line is we want this hand close to the body. If you have to use this hand while you're going for the firearm to defend yourself, maybe the person's right up on you, then you have to do what you have to do, and you, you have to be very careful that you don't flag your hand. I, I heard stories that uh, police officers, more often than not, tend to, or may accidentally, shoot themselves in the hand as they're fighting off a suspect and they're presenting their firearm. So we don't want that to happen. Okay, so for now, hands right here. Reach up, pull the garment up as high as you can, go for the firearm. Now, I wanna pull. Now notice my trigger finger. It's already indexing, prepared to index the firearm before it even comes out. If you have a level one holster that has a retention button, then if you are indexing properly, you should be able to hit that retention button, press it, and your firearm should come right out. Okay, so I'm coming up. Now, I wanna come up as high as I can, almost to the point where my thumb is right parallel to the nipple, the chest nipple. I believe they call that the pectoral index. We wanna come right up to the pec, right here. Okay, so I'm high, I'm crouched, I'm already in a natural position from the startle mode all right then i want to pivot the gun forward now 
using my peripheral vision, I can already get a sense of where my sights are. So what do I do to make it even better so I can acquire my sights quicker? When I come up and I press forward or I rotate forward, I'm gonna come at an angle. Now I can even see my sights better. The closer I can get this right here, this distance, the, cl the closer I get this distance, the quicker it is to get onto my front sight. Now I'm gonna press out, I'm gonna gather, and out. When I'm finished, I just do everything in reverse. Now, after I'm finished, I'm no, I don't care how smooth I am going to my holster. What, whatever happens has happened. I just wanna reholster as best I can. If I can look into the holster, that's fine. But with my positioning, I where I carry my firearm, it's very difficult to look it in. I carry it very far to the to the rear, like almost like four o'clock, almost to five o'clock position, so that if this hand go is is injured, I can reach around with my left hand and still acquire the firearm. That's a different lesson, okay? But again, come down, up, up so that the thumb is parallel to the chest. Rotate forward. Rotate the gun come out. Now, I'm going to add this one little thing here. I'm going to put my trick, my finger on the trigger and I'm going to press through that wall while I'm pressing out. And by the time I get to full extension and I'm on that front sight, by the time I got full extension, I've pre uh, I have broken the shot. Okay? And going back to the holster, being careful not to sweep your toes or anything of that nature. And that's how I train drawing from the holster and getting on to your getting on to the target. This is how I was trained to draw from the holster. I have seen other methods. I'm going to demonstrate one of them now. I I'm going to make the argument that I like my technique better that I was shown. Um, but I can see why someone would train drawing from the holster in this manner. So same setup, there's some type of uh, external stimuli that causes you to, re to react to a threat or potential threat. You identify that there's danger and your body goes into the mode that is, uh, that is involuntary. You're gonna react, you're going to flinch or you're gonna startle, okay? Same thing, once you settle, coming to the firearm, indexing, Pulling out. Now, I've seen this done. Coming up to keeping the thumb to the chest. And instead of coming out, I've seen people drop the elbow. Now see what happens here when you drop the elbow, the gun stays down. I still I don't feel like I have a good uh, a good uh, access to my front sight visually. Then meet, draw, or pre press out, and then take your shot. Now, in my opinion, this right here might cause me to overswing when I come up, okay? As opposed to coming up, going forward, and then just punching out. There's only two planes I'm working here. This one, this axis, and this axis, okay? As opposed to dropping the elbow now I have to go up, all right? I'd rather go up on um, coming out of the holster. Now, the one, the one thing I can see how this dropping the elbow might be applicable is if you don't have enough time to get full extension. You're coming up and you're just basically doing like a rocker type of thing and you're firing unsighted. That I could see being applied to being being applicable to dropping the elbow instead of coming up and pivoting forward okay so two different two different methods i've seen them both use appropriately for the scenario but nine times out of ten and, and, and of course i will be honest with you i've never been in a combat situation so who knows what the body will do under stress we train as much as we can so it becomes ingrained, we build a neural pathway so that we don't really have to think about it. 
but I can see both applications. It's just that I tend to train this more often than not. Okay? Now this is something you can practice at home during a dry fire session, but again, following all the safety rules so that we are, there's no chance of any negligent discharge or any accidents. Uh, you're going to remove all ammunition from the room and you're going to point the gun in a safe direction. You're going to identify a safe direction. Uh, I suggest pointing them in corners uh, because typically there's support structure in your corner so that if you do happen to have a negligent discharge, hopefully it'll lodge into that support. Uh, this wall here was designated a safe area for me because I'm in my basement classroom and we are underground. All right, so there's no chance anyone's going to get hurt. Now, if you do want to practice this at home, which I highly recommend as long as you're safe, you might want to invest in an inert plastic mold of a firearm. This is a, uh, well, the typical term is blue gun. This is a yellow gun that is um, property of USCCA, United States Concealed Carry Association. And as a representative of Delta Defense, I work for the De Delta Defense. We are the service provider to the United States Concealed Carry Association. Uh, I can tell you that with a membership to the USCCA, you can get one of these for free. And you can practice this in your home. You're still gonna treat it like it's an actual firearm because again, you wanna develop those neural pathways that will have you treating this gun just like an actual gun so there's no differentiation no chance of negligent discharge or an accident, any other type of accident. So treat it like an actual gun, but get one of these for free by becoming a USCCA member. I'm happy to give you more information about that. This is part of an overall training kit that you can get when you become a member at the elite or platinum level. In addition to the yellow gun, you get a free training booklet with live fire and dry fire drills that you can practice at the range. You'll get a free cap, badge, and you'll get the USCCA digital thumb drive or what they call bullet drive that has five courses. Once you plug this into your computer or your laptop, you can go through five videos, five courses that will give you drills that you can train with the yellow gun or with your actual firearm as long as you remove all ammunition from the room to avoid any negligent discharge. I'm happy to give you more information or you can scan the QR code right here and get all the information available to you from the USCCA. So that concludes this lesson. Hopefully you will continue to train. You will increase your skill set. If you're a new shooter, just train, train, train. And remember, dry fire should be roughly 80% of your training, 20% live fire at the range, all right? That's gonna save you a lot of money in ammo and range fees, all right? So again, look me up, find out how you, how you can get a free yellow gun I'm happy to answer all questions, and with that, take care, everyone.